everyone, so Carmen so here again from Ms. And I am with Trisha Russell from Fear to Freedom, which is a National Sexual Assault Conference exhibitor this year. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me, Carmen. Yeah, and so tell me a little bit about what Fear to Freedom is and the work that you have been doing. So we are a national nonprofit, and we do programming and education on college campuses um, to prevent sexual assault and to educate students on consent, um, safe relationships, um, and also how to support survivors, which is uh, very close to our mission. Um, and we really believe that um, students are poised to want to change the world, um, and they really do want to be actively engaged in things. So our programs that we do are actually hands-on programs. We're not just standing up there preaching to them, what making them watch a video. They actually help pack um, aftercare and eye care kits for victims of and sexual assault. So our aftercare kits um, have clothing and toiletries in them, and we disperse those to local hospitals especially the ones that do the forensic park exam. And um, we also um, have a kind care kit for survivors that maybe don't report right away um, and don't need the clothing and the tricks, but they still need therapy tools and things like that um, that they have. Um, we have a wonderful um, therapy tool in the, each kit that has um, it's a teddy bear called Freedom Bear, and he has a backpack that has moldable papers in the backpack, and the nurse or the counselor will um, instruct the survivor to write down what they're afraid of, who's hurt them, um, what their fears are, and they can put it in Freedom Bear's heart, and he holds on to it until they're ready to take it out and move forward, and then they can put it in a glass, and it will dissolve, and so it starts for help. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. And what do you feel, It because it kind of sounds like through doing these this hands-on support work that students are also learning a little bit about what the process is like for survivors. Absolutely. And what's what's been the reverberating impact that you guys have seen from, from engaging them in that work? So, um, especially watching the students as they're packing the kits and they're putting in t-shirt underwear no. they realize what they're putting in the kit and why they're putting it in it and why it's important so that has an impact on them um, and then also just knowing that they're helping a survivor we give each student um, a note card and they write an encouraging note to a survivor that's also put in the bag um, and we've had um, people come back and say that note meant the world to me I was at the lowest point I've ever been and that note really helped me realize that somebody out there does care about me I'm not alone I don't have to do this alone um, and I think that's so important for yeah. um, victims to understand that they don't have to go through this alone they don't have to do that um, and I think for the students it really resonates with them and a lot come up to us afterwards and say what else can I do how can I help how can I do more or they'll tell us that you know, my roommate was assaulted and I just didn't know how to help her and now I know some things I can do. So we really try to educate them. Um, students don't realize that they need to be going to class with someone who's been assaulted, yeah. either as a child or as a teenager or even on campus. And so I think it's important to them to understand the different types of sexual assault. I think it's important for them to understand that um, a lot of people aren't comfortable telling anybody yet. Um, some people are very vocal about it and want to make sure that people know that this does happen and how it happened because no assault is the same. They're all different. Um, and um, sexual assault doesn't care whether you're young, old, um, you know, what sex you are, anything. Yeah. It happens to everybody. And it can happen to everyone. We really want students to be aware and be thinking about what they can do. Again, yeah, and, and where did this sort of model, like, how does the program emerge? What are, what's sort of the inception story of Fear to Freedom? So our founder, Rosemary Tribble, was um, assaulted at gunpoint 30 years ago. And um, her healing process was slow to begin with. And then once she started really feeling and feeling like she could do more, she realized that she wanted to help other victims find their voice. Um, Rosemary is very fond of saying, being the voice for the voiceless. Um, and she and her husband became the president of Christopher Newport University in Newport News, where we're located. And so she would get the call a lot of times when the student was taken to the hospital. And because she's a survivor herself, she would go 
and help them, especially as a student. You're probably there by yourself unless you're in the boat with you, but you don't have a mom, a sister, anybody there with you. Um, and so she would go with them. She realized that they were leaving the hospital to get their scrubs um, or a hospital gown. And so you've already been at this terrible um, point in your life and yeah. you're leaving even more humiliated. So Rosemary wanted to create the kids, but she wanted to educate the students because she, as a wife of the university president, realized how often this was happening on campus. And so that is how we created Fair to Freedom, was through her. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, and how do you, so, you know, there there is a sexual assault epidemic happening on these college campuses, and there's been increased attention and activism around it, but how do you feel like, um, the work that students are doing with you all to support survivors sort of connects back to that prevention piece. Like, how do you feel like it all moves towards that same goal of making sure, you know, that we're caring for survivors, but we also are making sure that the culture that right. enabled yeah. the violence against them stops and is disrupted. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, most freshmen have to go through orientation program. A lot of those programs are done on a computer and they're just kind of flip away. I think our program is different because it actually is interactive with them. Um, and that makes a big difference for them. Um, my boys hate when I tell the story, but I have three boys that are all either in or out of college now, and all would go with me and help and set up the event, clean up that kind of stuff. And, um, I would watch them as they would pack the kids and they would write a note. And my youngest, when he went, he was still in school. He said, Mom, I'm not having this yet. I'm not writing a note. I'm just going to help you. And I said, that's fine. That's your choice. I'm not going to force you. Well, of course, but in the day, he had five kids and didn't make notes. And so I was, you know, proud mom moment. We got in the car and I said, what did you think? And he said, I had no idea, mom. I did not realize. And that made me understand that I think a lot of guys don't realize and don't really understand what it is um, and or what happens next. Um, and you know, they may have a friend who is a girl who is assaulted. They may have a friend who is a guy who is assaulted. And I think most of them, they just don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to deal with it, they don't know how to help. And I think our program really does help them with those pieces. Um, we truly try to give them specific things they can do as a student. Um, and, you know, we remind them, look, you are able to stand up and do something. You're able to stop something before it happens. All you have to do is be brave, be aware, um, and act. Yeah, and, you know, while we're here and we're all thinking about this idea of sort of going beyond the breakthrough of Me Too, beyond this um, this storytelling and this sea change moment where there's a lot of urgency right now and people are sort of looking for solutions. And it sounds a lot like like Fear to Freedom is filling this gap, right? Like there's a gap in services for survivors. Yeah. And so what what sort of longer term or sort of infrastructural solutions do you think exist that could that could make the processes that survivors have to go through better for them? That is a great question. Um, I definitely think the more conversations that we can have about it and the more awareness we can bring to it. Um, you know, I know that I didn't know as much about sexual assault, what the victim goes through. Um, I actually didn't realize until a few months ago that um, rape, sexual assault, and sexual violence are actually the top um, reasons for PTSD. And I don't think we talk about that enough. Yeah, we talk a lot about PTSD for military, um, for survivors of of shootings, um, you know, violence that way, but we don't talk about it this way. And I think the more we talk and the more open we are, um, the more we're, we're going to change things. Um, and the more we will bring um, light to really something that's been swept under the rug for a really long time. Um, and I think the more we talk about what a survivor actually goes through physically and mentally and realize that they're not separate things, I think that we will see more change. Yeah, and how can any of the sort of campus activists or faculty and staff members who might be watching right now, how can they get involved with you all or get y'all to their campus? Absolutely. So they can just go to our website and it's fear, 
the number two freedom.org and um, they can check out what we have on the website. They can contact us via the website or email um, and we'd be happy to come and do a program with them. We've worked with athletic departments, we've worked with Greek organizations, student groups, um, and we've worked with the Title IX offices on a lot of campuses. Um, but again, I think the key to all of this is getting these students um, involved um, and being active and being aware. Yes, changing hearts, changing minds. Yes. Changing. Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much oh, for everything you. you're doing and for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Thank you.